The sound of shattering glass jolted me from my thoughts. I rushed to the kitchen, my heart pounding, to find Alex standing over a broken vase, his face twisted in frustration. Damn it, Laura, why'd you put this here? He snapped, gesturing at the shards scattered across the floor. I bit back a retort. The vase had been in the same spot for years. I'm sorry, dear. I'll clean it up. As I knelt to gather the pieces, Alex huffed and stormed out of the room. I heard the front door slam moments later. So much for our quiet Sunday afternoon. I sighed, dumping the broken glass into the trash. My phone buzzed, and I saw a text from my father-in-law, Victor. Laura, can you come by? Need to talk. Important. Curiosity peaked. I grabbed my keys and headed out. Victor was waiting on the porch when I arrived, his usually jovial face creased with worry. Laura, thank goodness you're here, he said, ushering me inside. Is Alex with you? I shook my head. He went out. What's wrong, Victor? He led me to the living room, where we sat on the floral-patterned couch. I need to tell you something, but you have to promise to keep it between us. Of course, I said, concern growing. What is it? Victor took a deep breath. I went to the doctor last week. The results... They're not good, Laura. I have cancer. Stage four. The words hit me like a physical blow. Oh, Victor, I whispered, reaching for his hand. I'm so sorry. Does Judith know? He shook his head. No, and I don't want her to. Not yet. You know how she gets. I did know. My mother-in-law's overbearing nature would only make things worse. But Alex. Not Alex either, Victor said firmly. Please, Laura, I need time to process this myself before I deal with their reactions. I nodded, though keeping such a secret felt wrong. What can I do to help? Just be here, he said, squeezing my hand. I may need someone to talk to, someone who won't fuss or panic. Of course, I promised. Anything you need. As if on cue, we heard the front door open. Judith's voice rang out. Victor, are you home? Victor's eyes widened in panic. I squeezed his hand reassuringly before calling out. In here, Judith. Just stop by for a quick hello. Judith appeared in the doorway, her eyes narrowing as she took in the scene. Laura, what a surprise. I stood, forcing a smile. I was just leaving, actually. Thanks for the chat, Victor. As I moved to leave, Judith's hand on my arm stopped me. Before you go, dear, have you given any thought to what we discussed? About the summer house? I blinked, confused. I'm sorry? The inheritance, dear, Judith said, her voice sickly sweet. Victor and I aren't getting any younger, you know. It's important to have these things sorted out. I glanced at Victor, who looked uncomfortable. I don't think now's the time. Nonsense, Judith interrupted. It's never too early to plan. We wouldn't want any misunderstandings later on. The implication in her words made my skin crawl. I forced another smile. Of course not, but I really must be going. As I drove home, my mind raced. Victor's illness, Judith's thinly-veiled greed, Alex's indifference, it was all too much. I pulled into our driveway, stealing myself for whatever mood Alex might be in. The house was quiet when I entered. I found Alex in his study, engrossed in something on his computer. Hey, I said softly. Everything okay? He barely glanced up. Fine. Where were you? Just visiting your parents, I said, watching his reaction carefully. Your dad seemed off. Alex shrugged. Probably just tired. Did Mom say anything about the will? His casual tone sent a chill down my spine. The will? Why would she? No reason, he said quickly. Just curious. As I left the room, a sinking feeling settled in my stomach. Something was very wrong in this family, and I was caught right in the middle of it. The next morning, I woke to an empty bed. Alex had already left for work, not bothering to say goodbye. I sighed, pushing away the hurt. There were more pressing matters to attend to. I arrived at Victor's house just after nine, armed with homemade soup and a forced smile. Judith answered the door, her eyes narrowing suspiciously. Laura, what are you doing here? I held up the soup container. I thought I'd bring something over for Victor. He mentioned not feeling well yesterday. Judith's lips thinned. How thoughtful. I'm sure he'll appreciate it, though he's resting now. As she spoke, Victor appeared behind her. Is that Laura? Come in, dear. Judith's scowl deepened, but she stepped aside. I followed Victor to the living room, feeling Judith's eyes boring into my back. How are you feeling? I asked softly once we were seated. Victor glanced towards the kitchen where Judith had disappeared. Not great, he admitted. The pain's getting worse. My heart ached. Have you considered telling them? They should know, Victor. He shook his head firmly. Not yet. 
Judith would smother me, and Alex. He trailed off, a look of disappointment crossing his face. I understood. Alex's indifference towards his father was painfully obvious. At least let me help more, I pleaded. I could drive you to appointments, bring meals. What appointments? Judith's sharp voice cut through the room. We both jumped, not having heard her approach. Victor recovered first. Just a checkup, dear, nothing to worry about. Judith's eyes darted between us, suspicion clear. I see. And Laura's going to drive you, is she? How convenient. The accusation in her tone made my cheeks burn. I just offered to help. I'm sure you did, Judith interrupted. You're always so helpful, aren't you, Laura? Especially when it comes to my husband. I gaped at her, shocked by the implication. Victor stood abruptly. That's enough, Judith. Laura's family. Judith's laugh was cold. Family? Please. She's after something, mark my words. The only one after something is you, I snapped, my patience finally breaking. All you care about is what you might inherit. The room fell silent. Judith's face turned an alarming shade of red. How dare you? I think you should leave, Victor said quietly. It took me a moment to realize he was talking to me. Hurt and anger warred within me as I gathered my things. As I reached the door, I heard Judith's triumphant voice. I always knew she was trouble, Victor. It's about time you saw it, too. I drove home in a daze, tears blurring my vision. How had things gone so wrong? I was only trying to help to honor Victor's wishes. Now I'd been all but banned from the house. When I arrived home, I was surprised to find Alex's car in the driveway. I found him in the kitchen, rifling through drawers. You're home early, I said cautiously. He barely glanced up, looking for Dad's old business papers. Mom called, said I should check on some investments. My blood ran cold. Investments? What are you talking about? Alex sighed impatiently. The family trusts Laura. Dad's not getting any younger, and we need to make sure everything's in order. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Your father isn't even dead, and you're already divvying up his assets? Don't be dramatic, Alex scoffed. It's just good planning, not that you'd understand. The casual cruelty of his words stung. You should be more concerned about your father's health than his money, I said, my voice shaking. Alex finally looked at me, his eyes narrowing. What's that supposed to mean? Do you know something? I hesitated, torn between keeping Victor's secret and exposing the truth. Before I could decide, Alex's phone rang. He answered, turning away from me. Mom? Yeah, I'm looking now. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. As he spoke, a realization hit me like a thunderbolt. Alex and Judith were in this together, plodding behind Victor's back, and I was the only one who could stop them. I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled in my stomach. For days, I'd been trying to reach Victor, but my calls went unanswered. Even my attempts to visit were thwarted by Judith's icy presence at the door. He's resting, she'd say, her eyes gleaming with barely concealed triumph. Best not to disturb him. On the fifth day, I decided enough was enough. I drove to their house, determined to see Victor no matter what. But as I pulled up, I saw an ambulance in the driveway, its lights flashing silently. My heart pounding, I rushed to the front door. It swung open before I could knock, revealing Alex's ashen face. What happened? I demanded, pushing past him. Dad's gone, Alex said, his voice hollow. He, he passed in his sleep. The world tilted beneath my feet. No, I whispered. That's impossible. I just spoke to him last week. He was fine. Alex's eyes narrowed. Was he? You seemed awfully concerned about his health lately. What did you know, Laura? Before I could respond, Judith appeared, her face a mask of grief. But there was something in her eyes, a calculating gleam that made my skin crawl. Oh, Laura, she said, her voice dripping with false sympathy. If only you'd been here. Victor asked for you, you know, right at the end. The accusation in her words was clear. I felt my cheeks burn with anger and guilt. I tried to come, I said. You wouldn't let me in. Now, now, Judith soothed, patting my arm. There's no need for hysteria. What's done is done. As the paramedics wheeled Victor's body out, covered in a sheet, I felt a piece of my heart break. I'd failed him. I should have told Alex and Judith about his illness, should have insisted on being there. We'll need to start planning the funeral, Alex said, his voice oddly detached. Mom and I were thinking you could handle the arrangements, Laura. You're good at that sort of thing. I stared at him, incredulous. You want me to plan the funeral? For your father? Judith nodded, her eyes glittering. 
It's the least you could do, dear. After all, you weren't here when he needed you most. The unfairness of it all threatened to choke me. But as I looked at their expectant faces, a sudden clarity washed over me. They were setting me up, using me as a scapegoat for their own neglect. Fine, I said, my voice steady. I'll take care of everything. As I turned to leave, I heard Judith murmur to Alex, Make sure she doesn't go overboard. We don't want to deplete the estate unnecessarily. I clenched my fists, fighting back tears of rage. How could they be so callous, so focused on money when Victor had just died? Back at home, I sat at the kitchen table, surrounded by funeral brochures and to-do lists. But my mind was elsewhere, replaying every interaction with Victor over the past weeks. Something wasn't right. Victor had been ill, yes, but not on death's door. And the way Alex and Judith were acting, it was all wrong. My phone buzzed with a text from Alex, don't forget to pick up Dad's suits from the dry cleaner, and make sure you get itemized receipts for everything. I stared at the message, a chill running down my spine. They weren't grieving. They were covering their tracks. As I sat there, a terrible suspicion began to form in my mind. What if Victor's death wasn't natural? What if Alex and Judith had... No. I couldn't even think it. But the pieces were falling into place, painting a picture too horrifying to contemplate. I looked at the funeral plan spread before me and made a decision. I would play along for now, but I would find out the truth about Victor's death, no matter what it cost me. And if my suspicions were correct, I would make sure Alex and Judith paid for what they'd done. The day of Victor's funeral dawned gray and somber, matching my mood perfectly. I stood in front of the mirror, adjusting my black dress, my mind racing with suspicions and half-formed plans. I had to find out the truth. But how? At the church, I watched as mourners filed in, their faces a mix of grief and curiosity. I'd planned everything meticulously, just as Alex and Judith had demanded, but I had a few surprises in store. As I took my seat in the front pew, I felt Alex's hand on my shoulder. "'You did good, Laura,' he whispered, his breath hot against my ear. Dad would have appreciated it. I fought the urge to shrug off his touch. I'm sure he would have, I replied, my voice steady despite the anger boiling inside me. The service began, a parade of hollow eulogies from people who barely knew Victor. When it was Alex's turn to speak, I steeled myself for more lies. My father was a great man, Alex began, his voice thick with fake emotion. He always put family first and taught me the value of hard work and perseverance. I almost laughed out loud. Alex had never worked hard a day in his life, and the only thing he'd inherited from Victor was his money. But then, Alex's speech took an unexpected turn. In fact, just before he passed, Dad and I had a long talk about the future of our family business. He was so excited about the new direction we were planning to take it. I sat up straighter, my heart pounding. What was Alex talking about? Victor had never mentioned any business plans to me. Of course, Alex continued, his eyes darting to Judith. Mom was instrumental in helping us make these decisions. She always knew what was best for Dad. A murmur rippled through the congregation. I glanced at Judith, who was nodding along, a small smile playing on her lips. Suddenly a voice rang out from the back of the church. That's not true. All heads turned to see Victor's old business partner, Frank, standing up. Victor never wanted to change the business. He told me just last week he was thinking of selling it and retiring. The church erupted in whispers. Alex's face turned pale, while Judith's eyes blazed with fury. How dare you, she hissed at Frank. This is a funeral, not a business meeting. But Frank wasn't finished. And what's this about Judith being involved? Victor always said she had no head for business. He wouldn't have let her anywhere near those decisions. I watched in stunned silence as chaos unfolded. Alex stumbled through the rest of his speech, sweat beating on his forehead. Judith sat rigid, her knuckles white as she gripped her purse. As we filed out of the church, I overheard Alex and Judith arguing in hushed tones. How could you be so stupid? Judith snapped. Mentioning the business like that? Now everyone will be asking questions. I was trying to establish our claim. Alex shot back. How was I supposed to know that old fool Frank would be here? We need to be more careful, Judith warned. If anyone starts digging, their voices faded as they moved away, but I'd heard enough. My suspicions were confirmed. They were hiding something, and it had to do with Victor's death and the family business. 
As I walked to my car, my mind was made up. I couldn't confront them directly. Not yet. I needed proof, and I knew just where to start looking. I pulled out my phone and dialed Frank's number. Hello, Frank. It's Laura. We need to talk about Victor. There's something not right about all this, and I think you can help me figure out what. As I hung up, I felt a mix of fear and determination. I was stepping into dangerous territory, but for Victor's sake, I had to uncover the truth. Whatever Alex and Judith were hiding, I was going to find out. And when I did, they would pay for what they'd done. The days following Victor's funeral were a blur of forced smiles and barely concealed tension. I played my part, the dutiful daughter-in-law, while secretly meeting with Frank to unravel the mystery surrounding Victor's death and the family business. One evening, as I was sorting through Victor's belongings, a task Alex had conveniently delegated to me, I stumbled upon a hidden compartment in his old desk. My heart raced as I carefully extracted a small, leather-bound journal. As I flipped through the pages, Victor's familiar handwriting revealed a shocking truth. He had suspected Alex and Judith of embezzling funds from the company for months. The last entry, dated just days before his death, sent chills down my spine. I confronted Alex today. He denied everything, but I saw the guilt in his eyes. I'm meeting with my lawyer tomorrow to change my will. I can't let them get away with this. My hands shook as I closed the journal. Victor had known. He was going to expose them, and they... No, I couldn't let myself think it. But the evidence was mounting. Lost in thought, I didn't hear the front door open. Alex's voice startled me back to reality. Laura, what are you doing in here? I quickly shoved the journal into my bag. Just sorting through some papers, like you asked. Alex's eyes narrowed suspiciously. Find anything interesting? No, I lied smoothly. Just old receipts and documents. He nodded, seemingly satisfied. Well, don't spend all night on it. Mom's coming over for dinner to discuss the reading of Dad's will. My stomach churned at the thought of sitting across from them, knowing what I now knew, but I had to keep up appearances. Of course. I'll start to dinner soon. As Alex left the room, I let out a shaky breath. I needed to act fast, but I had to be careful. One wrong move, and I could lose everything, including my life. During dinner, I watched Alex and Judith closely, noting their shared glances and cryptic comments about the will. I played my part, nodding and smiling at the appropriate moments, all while my mind raced with plans. As Judith was leaving, I overheard her whisper to Alex, Make sure she doesn't suspect anything. We're too close to let it all fall apart now. That night, unable to sleep, I slipped out of bed and made my way to Alex's study. With trembling hands, I booted up his computer. Thanks to years of his carelessness, I knew his password. What I found made my blood run cold. Emails between Alex and Judith discussing not just the embezzlement but plans to take care of Victor if he became a problem. The last email, sent the day before Victor's death, simply read, It's done. No loose ends. I stifled a gasp, my mind reeling. They had actually done it. They had killed Victor to cover up their crimes. As I was about to log off, a new email notification popped up. It was from Judith, the lawyer called. We'll reading tomorrow at 2 p.m. Make sure Laura doesn't attend. We can't risk her finding out about the changes Victor made. My heart pounded in my chest. They were planning to cut me out completely, to ensure their secret remained safe. In that moment, staring at the damning evidence on the screen, I made my decision. I couldn't confront them directly. It was too dangerous. But I couldn't let them get away with this either. With shaking hands, I pulled out my phone and dialed a number I never thought I'd use. Detective Johnson, this is Laura Matthews. I need to report a murder. As I hung up, a mix of fear and determination washed over me. There was no turning back now. Tomorrow, at the will reading, everything would change, and I would be ready. My heart pounded as I entered the lawyer's office, Victor's journal and a small recording device hidden in my purse. Alex and Judith were already there, their faces masks of false grief. The lawyer, Mr. Simmons, nodded gravely as I took my seat. "'Mrs. Matthews, I'm glad you could join us,' he said, his eyes flickering to Alex and Judith. "'Shall we begin?' Alex cleared his throat. "'Actually, I don't think Laura needs to be here for this. It's a family matter, after all.' I felt a surge of anger. "'I am family, Alex. I was Victor's daughter-in-law for twenty years.' Before Alex could argue, Mr. Simmons intervened. 
Mr. Matthews, your father, specifically requested Mrs. Matthews' presence for the reading of the will. I saw a flash of panic cross Alex and Judith's faces. This wasn't part of their plan. Mr. Simmons began reading the will, and with each word, the tension in the room grew thicker. Victor had left the bulk of his estate to charity, with only a small portion going to Alex and Judith. But the real bombshell came at the end. And to my dear daughter-in-law, Laura, Mr. Simmons read, I leave my personal effects and the contents of my private safe, including all documents pertaining to the family business. The room exploded into chaos. Judith leapt to her feet, her face contorted with rage. This is preposterous. She has no right. Alex grabbed my arm, his fingers digging painfully into my skin. What did you do? He hissed. What lies did you tell my father? I wrenched my arm free, my voice steady despite my racing heart. I didn't tell him anything, Alex, but maybe you should explain what you and your mother have been up to. Mr. Simmons looked bewildered. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, I think you will, I said, Tid, pulling out Victor's journal and the recording device. I have evidence of embezzlement and... Worse. Alex lunged for the journal, but I was quicker. I pressed play on the recording device, and his own voice filled the room. Mom, it's done. Dad won't be a problem anymore. Make sure you destroy all the evidence of the transfers. The color drained from Alex and Judith's faces. Mr. Simmons stood, his expression a mix of shock and disgust. I think I need to call the authorities. What happened next was a blur. Alex made a desperate grab for the evidence, knocking over a lamp in the process. In the chaos, Judith slipped out of the room. I clutched Victor's journal to my chest, backing away from Alex's advancing form. You don't understand, he snarled, his eyes wild. We had no choice. Dad was going to ruin everything. By exposing your crimes? I shot back. You killed him, Alex. Your own father. Suddenly, the door burst open. Detective Johnson, whom I'd called the night before, entered with two uniformed officers. Alexander Matthews, Judith Matthews, you're under arrest for the murder of Victor Matthews and embezzlement. As the officers handcuffed a stunned Alex, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. It was over. Justice for Victor was finally within reach, but my relief was short-lived. As they led Alex away, he turned to me, his eyes burning with hatred. This isn't over, Laura. You'll pay for this. I swear, you'll regret the day you crossed us. As the door closed behind them, I sank into a chair, the full weight of what had just happened crashing down on me. I had exposed the truth, but at what cost? My marriage, my safety, my entire life as I knew it was now in shambles. Mr. Simmons placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. Mrs. Matthews, are you all right? I looked up at him, tears blurring my vision. I don't know, I whispered. What happens now? Little did I know, the worst was yet to come. Alex's threat wasn't empty, and the battle for justice, and my own survival, was far from over. The courtroom buzzed with tension as I took the stand. Alex and Judith glared at me from the defendant's table, their eyes burning with hatred. I swallowed hard, reminding myself why I was here. For Victor. For justice. Mrs. Matthews, the prosecutor began, please tell the court about the document you found in your late father-in-law's safe. I took a deep breath. It was a letter addressed to me. Victor knew what Alex and Judith were up to. He... Suddenly, Alex's lawyer jumped up. Objection! Hearsay! The judge nodded. Sustained. Mrs. Matthews, please stick to what you personally witnessed. I felt a flicker of panic. How could I tell Victor's story without his words? But then I remembered his final gift to me. Your Honor, I have Victor's final video message. He recorded it the day before he died. The courtroom erupted in whispers. Alex's face turned ashen, while Judith gripped the table so hard her knuckles turned white. As the bailiff set up the video, I caught Frank's eye in the gallery. He gave me an encouraging nod. We'd prepared for this moment, but nothing could have truly readied me for what came next. Victor's face filled the screen, his eyes tired but determined. Laura, if you're watching this, then I'm gone, and things have probably gotten very ugly. I'm sorry for putting you in this position, but you're the only one I can trust. He went on to detail the embezzlement scheme, how he'd confronted Alex and Judith, and his fears for his own safety. I've left everything to charity, he continued. There's nothing left for them to fight over. The only thing of value I have is the truth, and I'm entrusting that to you, Laura. As the video ended, the courtroom was dead silent. 
I looked at Alex and Judith, expecting to see defeat. Instead, I saw something that chilled me to the bone. Calculation. The defense attorney stood. Your Honor, while this video is certainly dramatic, it proves nothing. Mr. Matthews was clearly not in his right mind at the time of recording. We have medical records. Objection, the prosecutor interrupted. The defense has presented no such records. As the lawyers argued, I felt a tap on my shoulder. It was Detective Johnson, his face grim. Mrs. Matthews, we need to get you out of here. Confused, I followed him out of the courtroom. In the hallway, he turned to me, his voice low. If we just got word, Judith's disappeared, and we have reason to believe she's not working alone. My blood ran cold. What do you mean? There's a larger organization involved, the embezzlement. It goes way beyond just your family's company. You're in danger, Laura. Just then, a commotion erupted from the courtroom. We rushed back in to find Alex gone. The window behind the defendant's table shattered. As chaos engulfed the room, I stood frozen. The weight of what was happening crashing down on me. This wasn't just about Victor anymore. It was about a conspiracy bigger than I could have imagined, and I was at the center of it all. Detective Johnson grabbed my arm. We need to get you to a safe house. Now. As we rushed out of the courthouse, my mind raced. How had things spiraled so out of control? I'd wanted justice for Victor, but now I was running for my life. In the car, I clutched Victor's journal to my chest. It was all I had left of him, of the truth, but as we sped through the city, sirens blaring behind us, I realized the truth might not be enough to save me. I looked out the window, the world blurring past. What have I done? I whispered, tears stinging my eyes. But there was no going back now. I was in too deep, and the only way out was through. As we pulled up to a nondescript building, Detective Johnson turned to me, his face grave. Are you ready for this, Laura? Because from here on out, nothing will ever be the same. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for whatever came next. I'm ready, I said, hoping I sounded more confident than I felt. It was time to finish what Victor had started, no matter the cost. Six months after the courtroom chaos, I stood at the podium, facing a sea of reporters and flashing cameras. My hands trembled slightly as I gripped the edges of the stand, but my voice remained steady. Today, I stand before you not just as Laura Matthews, but as a voice for all those who have been silenced by greed and corruption, I began. The investigation that followed Alex and Judith's escape had uncovered a web of deceit far larger than anyone had imagined. Corporate fraud, money laundering, and connections to organized crime, it all came tumbling down like a house of cards. The Matthews Corporation, once a beacon of success, was built on lies and the exploitation of honest, hard-working people, I continued. But today we reclaim what was stolen, not just money, but trust, dignity, and justice. I saw Frank in the crowd, nodding encouragingly. He had been my rock through this ordeal, helping me navigate the complex world of corporate finance and legal battles. Victor Matthews was not just my father-in-law. He was a man of integrity who tried to stop this corruption and paid for it with his life. My voice cracked slightly, but I pushed on. His final act was to entrust me with the truth, and I stand here today to honor that trust. As I spoke, I thought of the past months, the sleepless nights poring over documents, the constant fear of retribution, the moments of doubt when it all seemed too overwhelming. But I had persevered driven by a determination I never knew I possessed. Alex and Judith Matthews have been apprehended, I announced, a ripple of excitement passing through the crowd. They, along with their co-conspirators, will face the full extent of the law. The news had broken just hours before. After months on the run, they had been caught trying to flee the country. It was over, truly over. But this is not just about punishment, I continued. It's about restoration. The Matthews Foundation, once a front for illegal activities, will be restructured. Under new leadership, it will focus on supporting victims of corporate fraud and advocating for stronger oversight in the business world. As I concluded my speech, the room erupted in applause. Reporters clamored with questions, but I stepped back, emotionally drained yet oddly exhilarated. Later that evening, I stood in Victor's old office, now mine. The weight of responsibility settled on my shoulders, but it no longer felt crushing. Instead, it was a mantle I was ready to bear. A soft knock at the door interrupted my thoughts. It was Detective Johnson. Quite a speech, Mrs. Matthews. 
he said with a smile. You've come a long way from that scared woman in the courtroom. I returned his smile. I had good people supporting me, including you, detective. He nodded. Then his expression turned serious. I have something for you. We found it in Judith's possession when we arrested her. He handed me a small, worn notebook. With trembling hands, I opened it. It was Victor's handwriting, dated entries from his final days. As I skimmed the pages, tears welled in my eyes. He knew, I whispered. He knew what they were planning, but he couldn't prove it. That's why he left everything to me. Detective Johnson squeezed my shoulder gently. He chose well. You've done him proud, Laura. As he left, I sank into Victor's old chair, clutching the notebook to my chest. The journey had been long and painful, but I had emerged stronger, wiser, and more determined than ever. I looked out the window at the city skyline, the future stretching out before me. There was still so much work to do, so many wrongs to right, but for the first time in years I felt truly alive, truly purposeful. We did it, Victor, I whispered to the empty room. We brought them to justice, and I promise you, this is just the beginning. As the sun set over the city, casting a golden glow across the office, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The past was behind me, the future uncertain but full of possibility, and I was ready to face it head on, armed with the truth and the strength I had discovered within myself. The end of one chapter, but the beginning of so much more.